What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode. Before today's video gets started guys, a huge shout out to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by designing premium wireless audio for half the price without compromise. They're doing things differently than other brands out there from the way they design their products to the way they price them. Raycon prioritizes their customer experience from start to finish. Raycon offers their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns with a variety of fit options and no dangling wires or stems. Raycon earbuds give you six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more more compact design for a comfortable, noise isolating fit. So if you're trying to take a break this summer, get away from the screens, your phone, computers, and all that stuff like that, Raycon is the best way to get away from the screens but not be completely unplugged. You can listen to podcasts, music, videos, whatever it might be, all using these guys. The company was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Mike Tyson, and Rich the Kid are obsessed with these Raycon earbuds. The best part about Raycon is they have a 45 day free return policy. So if you guys wanna go ahead and click the link down below, you'll get 15% off your pair of Raycon earbuds if you go to buyraycon.com slash flare. It'll be linked down below. If you guys wanna check it out, click the link down in the description. This summer, I'll be wearing these Raycon earbuds while I'm mowing the lawn, doing chores, getting on flights, going to Texas for Guggen Week all summer long. These guys are gonna be coming with me. I absolutely love these things. They don't fall out. They don't hurt your ears. They've got super, super long battery life. They are the most comfortable earbuds on the market. So again, huge shout out to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Again, link down below if you wanna get 15% off, go to buyraycon.com slash flare and check them out. Get yourself a brand new fresh pair of earbuds for the summer. With that being said, huge shout out to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Enjoy the rest of today's episode. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, oh, Pedro, no, Pedro, 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 no, okay, okay. Lucy, Lucy, no, no. Lucy, Pedro, 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 listen, Pedro, Pedro, no, Pedro. Pedro, stay in the pen. Hey, how's it going, folks? Well, that's about what I expected. We got a problem here, folks. All of our chickens are dead. So yesterday, came down. I realized there's a chicken missing. What's the strat there? Kind of looking around like, I'm not really sure where it would have... Can you guys give me two seconds for an intro? Yesterday I came down, realized chicken's missing. One chicken, uno, chicken, gano. We're like, okay, you know, it happens. But like missing, not dead, missing. Like physically removed from the pen itself. We started to get thinking, we're like, hmm, how could they possibly get in? There was a couple little dig out spots right there. We put some rocks there, now they can't get in. So it should be okay. Walked around, and we're like, they can't get through this. This is some thick gauge deal. Even if they could get through this, they'd have to chew through both of them. And I don't think they could get through that. So we're thinking, we're like, where else? could they be going and then we started looking we're like well the roof doesn't have chicken wire on it it's got cattle panels over here it's got some chicken wire and actually now that i'm looking at this chicken wire is kind of buckled up right here you see all that i don't think we did that i don't think that was there yesterday so inside the actual chicken coop itself is just cattle pans which we knew this we knew it we had never had any issues we knocked on wood and we hope for the best now this one has chicken wire and i don't see any dead pigeons or missing pigeons the pigeons look like they always do doing pigeon things but in here the roof is a little bit more exposed but like we put two panels i mean it's a decent size space but like the only reason why i was saying i was like there's no way because like they would have to physically like repel down you know to get down into this but they're, they're doing it because i mean qu quickly show you that's that's what we got left lots and lots of feathers one day they took one the other they took the rest of them and so what i did was i set a camera you can see there's a camera right on there once we saw the one missing i was like well we got to figure out how they're getting in we got to figure out where they're coming from or even if it's a raccoon we actually don't know that for a fact it could be a bobcat or a coyote or a hawk. We don't know. All we know is it has to be physically able to be removed. So we're thinking it's probably not a coyote. Bobcats can climb though. Little kittens can climb. So, but birds would have a hard time flying back out. I feel like they wouldn't be able to get out. So bobcat or raccoon. And it's probably more likely to be a raccoon, but we don't know that for a fact. So we set the camera out. So I'm like, oh, well, let's just see what it is before we show you guys and make a video and whatever. And the camera didn't work. Well, the camera worked. I didn't put it inside because one, I thought it might scare whatever animal it is. Two, it's really, not a very wide angle camera so we're like okay let's let's get a little further out and i tested it right like during the day it looks good like you can see everything during the day at night when that flash goes off it lights this up and this reflects
flex and this is what it looks like. That's what we're dealing with. You couldn't see nothing, but it was triggering. It was going off constantly, meaning whatever it was was inside last night. So we got to reevaluate our skills here. Now, we don't have any more chickens. So will they come back? That's the question. Will they come back? So we might have to bait them a little bit to see if they'll come back. Like we obviously have lots of remnants of chickens, feathers and stuff, but we need to go get some meat. So we might even go buy like a rotisserie chicken from Walmart. What do you think about dangle? So like, what if we just dangle it from here, have like a rotisserie chicken and see like what comes up to come get it. We put the camera right over there on the inside so it actually gets us pictures. And then we're gonna set some traps today too because if it's a raccoon, we're good. Bobcats are pretty tricky to trap. What we'll do is we'll get some dog proof traps which is good for the raccoons. We may even put some inside. Oh, I'm looking right here, Banjo. What do you think? I know, I just saw that. What do you think that, oh no. They're trying to get to them. I wonder yeah. if that's their strat tonight. Cause they ate all the chickens. They probably didn't have time to get the pigeons before yeah. daytime. Look at that. That's brand new we would not have I mean, left that. that it's, it's, it's and it's dug out yeah. because we put all this here because otherwise pigeons could easily get under there so i know that was not like that and you can see where they have their paw i don't know dude i'm like i don't see any prints anywhere dude they're coming for the pitch tonight they've got to be but i don't know do you think a raccoon can get in that gap right here i mean that's not very big they might be able to we might have to block it just so they don't get the pigeon tonight so there is there a little of piece of wood yeah we might just put like some rocks i think that's the only place that i see that really got tore up yeah i might have to kind of we'll there throw some some rocks and stuff yeah that's it's tore up we did not do that we made sure it was all pushed down so i'm guessing they're going to come back and i don't think the raccoons can get into this one from the outside but they could definitely get in here and then get in there so i think they're going to try to come in here first because they've been coming in here clearly for the last two days i think the plan is going to be get some bait get some traps put some traps in here put some traps on the outside so that way when they're like running around the outside we could even get them before they even get inside here because we don't want the pigeons to get ko'd like that's priority number one chickens I'm sorry, I tried. I didn't think they would come in with a whole army and wipe you guys out in one night, okay? We've had them in here for how long, six months? Yeah. And we've never had a single, it's dude, that's how it always happens though. Yep. It's when you least expect it, folks, but bam, they come get you. So anyways, that is the plan. Let's go ahead and get the rest of these guys fed. We're gonna try to put the animals, lock them up. It's actually really cold out, not cold, cool. I have a hoodie on, I mean, I'll probably take this off here soon, but it's like 70s today. So I think we're actually gonna keep the animals down here, let them eat hay, we'll give the pasture a break, kind of wrangle up the animals and kind of lock them down here for at least the next few days since it is cool because it's been like 120 freaking degrees every single day so finally we have a cool day to where i feel comfortable with them just kind of laying around in the dirt and just big chilling so anyways let's get these guys fed ralphie you want some grain buddy here you go buddy ow carol there you go hey donkeys how you guys doing there you go come here felicia what happened? Pedro just got smashed by Quattro. <laughs> like, to the fence, and I was like, okay, we're laughing. We don't like, we don't promote animal abuse, but dude, Pedro is the biggest jerk on the farm. Like he attacks everybody. So the fact that Quattro had to teach him a lesson, listen, it's a circle of life. Okay, I wouldn't be too pissed if something happened to him. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Ralphie boy, you're stealing from the donkeys. Come down here, pal. What's big Ralphie doing? Hi, big boy. Eat some of this. Give the rest of the donkeys. Let the donkeys eat out of the bin. What's up, big guy? You see him? He's starting to shed. Look at this. Isn't that crazy? It's about time, dude. It's like 112 out here. Well, not today, but I wonder what he's gonna look like. You see that? He's literally just shedding. Like, you can just, like, pull it off. Huh. That's so weird. I feel like it's, like, a little late, but my guy. I guess it's been unseasonably warm. You would think he would have lost this when it was, like, 110 the other day, but yeah. he's also from the desert, so he's actually kind of used to the heat. I wouldn't say he doesn't mind. I'm sure he doesn't like the heat, but he's used to it, aren't you, buddy? All right, here you go. They're fed. Where's is Llama up there? Yeah, I think we gotta get Llama. We might have to go wrangle Llama. Come on, Llama. You left your boy Steve. She's not gonna be happy. You think just go up, let her run downhill, you think? Yeah. I'll go this way, you go up top. Look what they did to the fence right here. These animals just destroy everything. Once we get some wire for that. She's alert. Llama, no, Llama, no. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> See, I looked down at that. I was gonna try to get on the left. All right, you're in a good position, Banjo. Yep, hang to that side. There, yep, yep, yep. She's on the move. She's on the move. Come on, llama. Llama. No, don't bet. Don't circle back now. Well, that was the easiest wrangling session of all time. She's locked up. They might be able to get out. But oh my gosh, they busted a hole right over here. When we built this fence, we had goats, okay? We didn't have freaking camel or carol. Look at this. I don't know if this is the only one or not. Yeah, see, the animals would get through this. Ralphie, you gotta take it easy on the fence, my guy. It's not built for. He wants that fresh grass, which I get it, Ralph. Everything's okay in moderation. This is what I got to work with here. A little flimsy piece of wire. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to make... Hey, how's it going? I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do this. We're making progress. This is like not ocean approved wire. It's a little on the light side. I don't know if this is gonna hold. 
How you feeling about that one? Then we might see the animals up in the pasture later. I mean, it's not like they're gonna die or nothing. I'm just trying to give the grass a little bit of a break. Normally, I let them go up there to eat, obviously. And when it's hot outside, they get some really good shade. There's still a little shade over here, but it's not that hot. It's actually pretty cool outside. So figured we'd take advantage of the unseasonably cool weather, and keep them down here, and give the grass a break for at least the day. I don't know if this is gonna work though. We got it on. I don't know how strong it'll be though. Yeah, no promises on this one. I'll go ahead and wrap this other piece of wire on this guy. We're gonna call it good and hope for the best. They busted through this and I'm not sure if my wiring skills are gonna be up to par. Really? Yep, I'm currently wiring it to a zip tie, so. If they want out, they can get out. Maybe we'll convince them to stay in here for the day. Anyways, animals are now locked up. They're gonna hang out here for the day. We are going to, before we do all the chicken predator trapping, we're gonna run down to the cabin pond, check out the pond, and then we're gonna try to clean up some of that extra wood. You guys have seen all that wood out there. We've got the ducks trailer. We're gonna take that down there and load up any scraps and trash and whatever, and then we've got a load to take all the way down to the dump. So we're gonna try to clean that area up. Take advantage of the cool weather and go do some manual labor. Stay tuned. Shit! We made it down to the cabin pond, folks. We are, uh, well, we gotta get this wood ore. This is the mess that we're dealing with. So we got the trailer. We've got a pile of mess there. We got a pile of mess there. So we're trying to sort the wood. We procrastinated and then winter hit and then spring hit and we were so excited for fishing and adventures. So now it's middle summer and now it's like, oh, it's not too hot out. So today's kind of the day we're gonna try to get some of it organized, figure out what we're keeping. Are we gonna insulate the roof? Are we gonna put the trim on it? Like what, what all are we gonna do to really finish this guy up? And then what of that part is this? Whatever's left that's still in good condition I would like to keep because wood's basically pound for pound the same price as gold at this point so I, I don't want to throw it out but there are going to be some scrap pieces and maybe some stuff that kind of got weathered and stuff like that that we'd probably try to get rid of let's let these dogs out and you don't know don't mess with the geese just leave no leave them alone it's hard bringing a hot dog down here because we got those geese the geese are way on the other side hopefully they don't control them but we're gonna get this organized get a little manual labor in this morning while it's still cool out you guys stay tuned burning now you ever just stack a pile of money and light on fire that's that's how i feel right now a lot of it was scrap literal scrap so we're not trying to be wasteful here folks this is what we're keeping to try to finish the cabin there's trim the ceiling that type of stuff and then just to extra stuff to keep for whatever future projects it's this so we're actually keeping quite a bit of it we're not trying to waste any good wood, especially in the times that we're dealing with right now with wood just being crazy high price and hard to kind of find so we're keeping all this whether it's super high quality stuff i don't know but like building little things like chicken coops or shells or whatever these would probably work you're not going to want to build a home with this pile right here but we're we're getting it burned up and the trailer's loaded with like the non-burnables we wanted to burn the wood just so we didn't take the wood to the dump that didn't make much sense since it will burn some of you guys might be thinking why don't you keep the wood for inside there for the wood burning stove thought of that after i lit this fire we'll still have plenty of even after we go through all this there'll probably still be some scrap wood so we'll stack that up and we can use that for wood to burn inside the cabin this winter everything is good to go we are going to take the trailer to the dump and then hopefully go to walmart and get some bait to trap these raccoons you guys stay tuned we made it to Walmart. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get some raccoon bait. If we set the cameras and a bobcat gets in their whole different ball game, folks, they don't work in the dog proofs. We are just assuming it is the raccoons because the raccoons have pretty much been the one animal that have killed almost everything. Now that I think about it, I think pretty much every animal we've lost on the farm, we have contributed the dub to the raccoon. Today, that all changes. We are starting freaking war. See you guys inside. Alrighty, folks, if I was a raccoon, what kind of meat would I want to stick in my mouth? That is the question of the day. So we've got all this looking stuff. We got to get that nasty stiff, the stench. Yeah, like some chicken. We think they got a whole chicken somewhere. Oh, right there. I said we dangle that from a rope. So it's like flailed out. This might sound messed up, but we could take some feathers that are on the ground and like make it look like it's- Might a, as well use it, they're already dead. They're already KO'd. So in, in their honor, we're gonna use parts of their carcasses to trap the predator and, and avenge their death. That's essentially what we're gonna do. So anything else you can think like bloody or fishy? I mean, raccoons like the fish strat. Ooh, what the heck, what's that? Wild herring and wine sauce? Eee. Crab. crab in a can. Actually, that would actually kind of work. It's claw meat. 17. 
No, nah, we're good there. We put tilapia at the ranch. ranch Remember they, they marked they those? Yeah. That. Well, some little tilapia wouldn't be bad. We kind of want to make like a feast in the middle and then put traps around it, kind of booby trap them. Now, if they just run up past our other traps, there's only so much you can do. Yeah, but what's going on? Liver. Okay, a little meat. So I would say that's the trifecta there. Make essentially a gut pile, a yeah. bait pile. Yeah. Have the chicken dangling from the ceiling. Have everything else around it and then make like a ring of fire with traps. And then we may, no, I'm not even gonna put him on the outside. I say, well, let's trap him where he killed him. Make him suffer. We're gonna walk in there and say, well, well, well. Blinded by the freaking light, folks. This is serious. I take it serious when something takes out my animals. We're not messing around. I don't even want to trap him outside of the pen. I want him to work so hard to get back in thinking, man, I'm going to sneak in there. I'm going to bamboozle these guys. They think they made a predator-proof enclosure. Well, bam! All of a sudden, he sticks his hand in the dog proof, and he's stuck there until the morning. And we come out and blinded by the freaking light. So, I think that would work. Let's go look for sardines in a can. We're pretty good. And then there's, like, some fish sauce as well. They usually, like, really sweet stuff, like honey and jams and stuff like that or they fish like fish Ooh, tuna there it is the old tuna aisle is gonna have some stuff this is serious this is war and there may be multiple there could be a whole family be a giant family so we gotta make sure we don't leave one man standing essentially oh here's the deal clam juice yep get that clam. yeah that's it we drank yeah. that on a video it was yeah. not the strat How something else drink in it? 100 bucks uh, the whole I'm thing whole no you would die you would die you'd get, you'd get Dude, KO'd. Yeah, that's yeah. no, it's a bad deal. Okay, sardines and mustard sauce. No, okay, we don't need Crabby. Louisiana hot sauce. Just mess with them, get them all yeah, fired them up. All. Boneless herrings, little can, because they like shiny stuff too. So like, this will reflect the moonlight. All right, yeah. there you go. That's it. There you have it, folks. That is what we're getting for raccoon trapping. Time to go home. Set out the bait pile. Set out the traps and declare war on Ricky. You guys, stay tuned. Shit! We made it back, folks. Took everything to the dump, got it emptied, went to Walmart, as you guys saw, and got the goods to trap the predator at the farm. We just got these pigeons fed. Hey, we're gonna protect you guys tonight. No pigeons dying on my watch. You can see they're all munching away. I think kind of what we're thinking is suspend the chicken somewhere in this guy. Again, we might use some of the remains of the other chickens to make it look like a newer chicken, but you saw the other stuff we got at Walmart as well. So we are gonna try to get some cameras in here, get the traps that we've got four dog proofs. Go ahead and bring that bin over here. We'll show you guys what we're dangling with. I want to trap them in here. We could put traps on the outside. And I want them to think they're getting a feast. Joke's on you, raccoon, because we're going to have some traps set out. I just hope they don't outsmart us. And do you think they're just going to be like, why would I eat dog food when I've got a whole chicken? You know, what if what if they just come and munch the chicken and they just dip? Well, then there'll be less chicken left the next day. Maybe a two, oh. three day process. Yeah. You got to make friends with them. You got to have your friends close and your enemies closer. We're inviting them over for the cookout. Hey guys, we got chicken. We got sardines. We even got tilapia. Yeah. Come join the feast. Okay, it's a like Thanksgiving. Trust, yep. This, Gain their trust. Like, Ooh, little dog food. And then what? Bam! You just take them out. Okay. Where I can't wait. This will be very rewarding. Blinding these little suckers by the light because they took out our entire pack of chickens. They're Gonzo, Bonzo. So that's what we got. Is a whole chicken. Is it thawed out or still? Oh, you know it's thawed. Ooh, really? Yeah. That thing's gonna get. It's juicy. It's gonna smell. It's gonna have some stench too. So we got a little fish hooker deal that we're gonna kind of run through. And I would say hang it probably from. We gotta be careful. The camera is not a very wide angle. That corner's probably your best bet or that corner and shoot this way otherwise you get some pigeon traffic which sends yeah, the camera yeah. put the camera here put it right in front of this and then shoot it i'd say right about in there is probably good or do you put it back try to do it like where there's not the chicken wire well though i think they just get they jump down regardless yeah it doesn't matter so, if there's chicken wire okay because they come in from wherever yeah. and they come down and then they go then they'll go to it yeah. do we put it right here and have the camera right there so you don't have this pole in the way that might work. Originally, I set the camera up at this and shot it over that way, and I could see the dangle and going over there. So over there would probably work. We'll do that, and then we'll put the dog proofs in the center here, and then maybe like one over there, because you don't trap them and then be able to reach this, because they'll tear it, like they'll, they'll shred it. So we don't want them to be able to touch a wall. We'll put all the traps maybe around the post, and they'll just run around that post and do raccoon things. Let's get to trapping. Look at that. What is it, beef liver? Eee, nasty, some bloody. Do you put this under the chicken, or do you like spread some stuff out and let them like take their time we could put it by this post probably like maybe like right on this side yeah i'm just saying like let them gain some confidence maybe get multiple in here at one yeah. time then what bam get it when they least kind of expect it maybe we'll just make this the bait corner you would see them getting in here they got to be coming in from up above that's got to be the deal i mean we saw a chicken hanging from the <laughs> ceiling chickens don't just get in the ceiling oh, by accident a dead chicken it was hanging here you know you had a mulberry tree right above you right you like mulberries uh sure yeah there was a chicken hanging right here i'm guessing they're coming and they're jumping down or they're coming through here 
here and then climbing. Yeah. And then climbing back up. The fact that they did one of them guys, they're gonna be looking to get to these pigeons tonight. So let's deter them from the pigeons. I don't want them to get close to the pigeons. Let's have them come in, look at the pigeons and be like, why would we eat the pigeons when there's free chicken right here? So we're gonna go to the opposite corner. Give her one of these guys. Eat. It, it, that is disgusting. I hope for our sake that they like eat all this and then get trapped just so we don't have to deal with this after the fact. I might just leave the wrapper. They're kind of trash panda. They might see that it glistening in the light a little bit. Beef liver's done. We got some fish. Hand me that tilapia. I say we just make a gut pile. Get them all concentrated. Maybe they'll hit our traps first on the way in. Or they might just ignore our traps. Eat. I might leave that just, just like that. They think we just left some wild tilapia here in the cornfields. Let's set some traps based around this and then we'll hang the chickens. So we got good night. We got dog proofs. These are the easy peasy ones too. So I would just short chain them yeah. real short. I know you like doing that. You don't like giving them space to run. You always say that. We always hang them out here and you're like, yeah. no, 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 don't yeah, give them don't, any room. They don't need to run around. I would say for the camera's sake, first one be here and that'll be a little tight. Second one like right here. Again, you don't want it close to the fence because they'll shred it. So we'll put one right here. Oh, Goodness. Got that hammer over there? This is a hard deal here. They ain't going nowhere, boys. So how you set these guys, you just squeeze them and they're set. They're the easiest doggy proofs. They don't last very long. They get rusty and pretty much break every year, but they are easy. That was almost bad. Maybe I'll put it in the ground first. The short chains are a little tougher. This ground don't hold it very tight. Try packing it in a little bit. You don't want them to be able to knock it over and get the food out. Yeah, figure that would happen. I don't want to give them more chain. It's not letting me drive it. So if you give them more chain, they're going to tear up our fence. We can't be having that. That's probably good. Woo! And we got dog food. Oh, it's right over there, right? And then, Banjo's favorite drink. Take a sip. Clam juice. I say we spin the wheel to who has to take a sip of it. Normally I'm about the wheel life. Not today. No, I'm not vibing on it. If they didn't have chunks in there, <laughs> yeah, like, chunky. what's the straw with that? So there's, it's not orange juice, so you don't need to have pulp in this thing. I don't know what the deal why it's chunky. Throw a little bit more in there. I mean, these raccoons, I'm nervous. They're just gonna go for the filet mignon. But yes. if there's like five or six of them, I feel like we might get a couple, you know? They're gonna be hungry. So go ahead and take some of this juice. The juice has the stench. Yeah, yep, it's got some stench going. We'll be nice to the raccoons for a little bit though, right? Because they get caught. Guess what? They just lean over and, yeah. and they got a whole meal. It may be a two dayer. The reason we're suspending the chicken is so they can't get it. While they're like working for it, then they see the trap. So this gut pile could be counterproductive, but we want to do it just to make sure that they show up. There's enough stench going on, there's enough food, and maybe we'll get a bunch of them to come in. So we got one trap set out. Where's that hand? Over right here. Oh, Banjo's got it. All right, let's set this guy over here. I'm thinking chicken, like, make them go through all of our traps before yeah. they get to the filet mignon. So we'll get this guy pounded in. Don't need Buddy getting out now. All right, hit this guy. All right, set the trap. Little doggy food. And some Clamisha juice. Oh, yeah. It's that good stuff. You don't want to take a shot? No. All right, well, let's get the rest of these set out and hang up the chicken. We almost forgot. More filet mignon. Boneless smoked herring. This was at the groceries. Why? Who, what sick individual thought this was a good idea? But for raccoons, it should work out good. So you can see we've got four traps. One, two, three. Over there's four. Assuming they're coming. I've almost got a feeling they're coming. I bet they land on this thing. I know, I thought about that too. Like, do you think they're like swinging like monkeys and just I bet they come down, they probably sneak through, climb down and jump. The chickens aren't laying over there, they're laying over there. So hopefully they jump down. The thing is, if they go for the easy food, which is on the ground, they've got to go past at least these two traps. Even if they land here and run over to investigate the chicken, they should check this out over here. I think the idea is make the chicken really hard to get. Make them look at that and be like, ah, maybe let's go check out the strat over here. And then they check out the trap. So here's what we got for chicken. We've got a Guggen fish stringer that we're going to stick through this. You have to go deep in it. Oh, I found it. Yep. He's a doctor. Oh, gosh, yeah. Oh, she's dripping, too. Man, this sucker's heavy. You want to throw some feathers on it? Yeah, hang on. Let's see. I mean, I think anywhere around there will be fine. Right in this. Yeah. this Because I don't want them to be able to stand up on their yeah, hind legs and get to they're it. They're not going to be that tall. It looks like chicken to me. And then Banjo's got feathers to make it look like a 
floating chicken. Is this messed up? <laughs> this is all in revenge though. Like I understand some of you guys are like these sick individuals. Okay. We can even put some feathers like over here just to on top of this. Yeah, like or whatever. This area. So that way they think they must have restocked the chickens. They went to a tractor supply. Jokes on you, buddy. Freaking full of traps. Oh yeah, there's another carcass over here. I mean, I feel bad. These are my friends. He's not doing too hot. He's seen better days. But they ate that whole thing. Oh, it's gone though. This is the only way we're gonna ensure a vengeance for these suckers. Yeah, I mean that, that looks like a chicken. Yeah. Look at look, I even got the wings going on it. Look at that. Tell, and they even got a little leg dangling. I know. I know it's messed up. I know, folks. This is what gets you taken off YouTube in a hurry. We gotta get these raccoons dead. They've eaten all the chickens in one night. They're gonna be back. They're gonna think. Well, I think they're coming back for the pigeons. Is what they're doing. I say we maybe take those rocks and block those little holes just in case they're like, screw all this. Let's just eat some pigeons tonight. Yeah. That's where they're headed. Let's grab some of these rocks and block these holes. This should help. Raccoon can move that. He wins. Andrew's got a boulder. Right on top. Perfect. That'll at least help. They come over there, they're like, we're here for Pidge. Oh, what the strat was with the rock. <laughs> oh, what's that? Oh, oh, chicken. Oh, herring. Oh, beef liver. Antilopia. Hey, at that, 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 that. See, they liked it. How about you go outside? Go get them. We should just leave Millie and Lucy in here. If this don't work, I'm gonna get in a ghillie suit and hide it. I'm gonna sleep in that little thing and just wait for them to come in and just smoke them with a bat. Like, make it personal. Like, have some nails sticking out of it. Some of you guys might feel bad for these raccoons. The thing about it, they've taken out all of our ducks, all of our chickens. They've taken out some turkeys. What else have they killed? Guineas? I mean, we've had a lot of KOs. Any bird I've owned has gotten KO'd at one time or another from a darn raccoon. This is war. They asked for it. They get it. Anyways, this is set up. We're gonna put the camera in the corner. Hopefully get some good footage. I really want to see how they're entering. So we're gonna position the camera to hopefully see them fall down, jump down in some way. And hopefully in the morning, we got a bunch of raccoons in the traps that we can blind by the light. You guys stay tuned. Shoo! Well, folks, it is the next day and I don't see Mr. Raccoon. Oh, he touched the sardines though. <laughs> Over. Did he touch the, oh, I don't see the fish. Oh, these flies that are gross. gross. The chicken's not really touched. Dude, hey, are you guys hungry or what? You guys want some Scooby snacks? Let's investigate this sucker. Dog proof number one. Nothing, nothing. Ew, look at all that. Dude, but the sardines are completely flipped. We, they were right here. We had them next to these fillet. Oh my gosh, these flies are just not the deal here, folks. So what do you think would eat the sardines? Look, they're gone. Yeah. So we do have trail camera there, and we've got a trail camera right over there. And so we'll have to go inside and... So you're telling some me footage. it ate sardines or whatever it was, yeah. like some fish? Yeah, uh, uh, herring, yeah, smoked herring. But it didn't eat the tilapia. tilapia. I know, that is, that's what doesn't make any sense. It's like there's no way it's a raccoon then, because a raccoon would come it's, and eat all this stuff. more than just that little Yeah, thing. the only other thing I can think of is like, yeah, possum, or we might need to get another can of herring and put it in like a cage trap, so that way they have to go in. Like if that's yeah. their only strat, he obviously didn't mess with that. The dog could always get I know. around it. What's weird is like, the only thing that was touched was sardines. That's what's strange. Like if there was a whole family of raccoons coming in here, you would have thought they would at least mess with the tilapia. Or like the dog food. Or any of the dog food. Like, they left pebbles on the ground. They didn't even have to reach in it. Now, this is interesting. So we're gonna go back. We're gonna grab these trail cameras here, and we're gonna have to go check them out and see. See what we're dealing with. Obviously, something came in and ate it, and I don't think it's mice. Mice can't clear a whole thing of herring. A lot of times, like, your dog proofs will be, like, empty after, like, a week because of the mice. I don't think that's the case with herring. I think there's something in here. I just hope one of the cameras here got something. And then we've got to re-strategize, because I Obviously, we didn't get him on night one. We fed him, but good news. We saved the pigeons. No pigeons are MIA. That's all that matters. For now, protect the pigeons, catch the raccoon. Let's go check the footage. Shoo! We are inside, ladies and gentlemen, ready to review trail cam footage. We had the herring disappear, as you guys saw, but nothing else was touched. So it's like something had to have gotten it, something more than mice. Let's take a look. First picture, hanging chicken, nothing. Second picture, getting darker. This is the can that we're at looking at. Oh, oh, look at that, raccoon. Oh, so they're coming down the pole there. I bet that's how they're accessing it. Oh, what? That's it? Oh, but you can see the can move, the can move. Okay, so some reason the camera goofed up a little. I mean, it got what we needed. We set it out, nothing. 7 p.m., something random triggered it. I'm looking over here to see, the problem is there's so much light change. Like to see if there's anything, you know, what would have set this off, right? Like, is there anything in the tree? I don't see anything else moving. But then all of a sudden, randomly, 2.30 in the morning, Ricky, big chungy, that's big boy, coming down the pole here. So I'm guessing they're entering from the roof and then using the, so we thought they were like jumping, like landing. And I'm like, how do they get back up? They're using the pole. I don't know why I didn't think of that. For some reason, I thought maybe there's chicken wire above that pole, but there obviously must not be. We're gonna have to go back and look. And then nine minutes later, he left. So for some reason, the photos didn't go through at all when he was down there munching, but you can physically see the can 
get moved and he was there for nine minutes and so that's him leaving that's him coming down he he's eating and then he left and that's it and then all since the next morning and then if that happens but you can see that's moved right there so that's staying the same now you can see the difference so he came in at 2 30 and left at 2 39 why he didn't eat anything else i have no idea i would think he'd be coming back at this point there's more food to be had there i mean there's a dangling chicken you would think he would try to get that <sighs> man it's almost like he just like went in real quick ate probably his favorite food which was the herring and then like maybe got a little skittish and was like oh there's no live i mean he's on live chicken duty obviously that's not a live chicken he didn't touch any of the dog food he didn't touch any of the tilapia he didn't touch any of that beef liver i don't want to risk him getting in the pigeon pen that's the biggest thing because he's here he's confident he's moving with stealth precision maybe he doesn't like tilapia maybe the dog food is like good when he's got the option for live pigeon i feel like he might take the live pigeon so now that we know we're, we're dealing with the raccoon which is i mean it's good because they're the easiest critters to trap by far i think that we probably are gonna have to go set some of these dog proofs outside of the kennel kennel the pen i bet they're getting it on the backside, climbing up and over and down so we'll probably set some dog proofs on this backside, maybe some over here and some in the front before he can get inside the pigeon pen. I think we needed to set some traps. So see you guys down at the animals. As you guys may or may not have noticed, it's the next day since we reviewed the footage. We did not have time yesterday to review it. So we went one more night and I was like, we might get lucky. And uh, he came back. He was back two nights in a row. So I kind of want to look at this like, I mean, there's a bunch of little claw marks. So yeah, he gets in from probably here actually. Yeah, there's a, there's, oh, yeah. oh, look at his hair. Look at that. There's hair. I don't know why I didn't notice this before. Chicken, gone. Fish, gone. Beef liver, gone. And the herring, gone. So he ate everything last night. He ate the rest of it. He, but, but, but did not touch the traps. Nothing touched the traps. I think I'm going to leave one trap in here. One. In case he makes it back in here and misses our other traps. But I think put a trap there. Maybe put a trap back there and then put a trap over there. On the outside of the pen. Because I just don't know which direction he's coming from. You assume from back there. I want to leave one. Just in case he comes back. Because there's no food now. So if he comes back tonight, there's not going to be anything but the dog food for him to eat. Let's get all these traps reset. Maybe if we're lucky, he'll smoke Pedro tonight, huh? I hope so. He's such a jerk. You guys might be like, that's cruel to say. You come fight this turkey. He'll beat your ass. He's a mean sucker. Well, we got the traps cleaned out. They were kind of had some moldy food in it. It rained last night and kind of got all gross. So we're redoing it. Hopefully it don't rain too much more, but I'm going to leave one in here in case again, like he misses our other traps. I feel like we're going to catch him on the outside. I mean, maybe not. There's no more food left. So maybe it's like, he's going to come back thinking we refed him and maybe he will come back for the dog food. So we'll have one inside and then the other three will be on the outside. He might be scared of this thing. Maybe I'll put it right in the middle. I'll give him more chain on this one. I'm just shocked he didn't mess with it. He's just been eating all the other good food we gave him. I mean, if he messes with this pull up, it's not a big deal. But let's go ahead and let's give him some more chain. Maybe he's scared of the steak a little bit. All right, that should be plenty. I'll stick this right over here. All right, set, add some food. All right, add a little juice, just a little bit. There we go. Well, we got one out. Let's go set the rest outside. Well, well, well. What do we have right here? Look at this. See their trail? So I don't know where he's coming in from, but he's gonna be coming right here. You can see it's all smashed down. I'm looking for other prints if there's like a bobcat or... I see one of Pedro's. This is a no-brainer right here. They're walking this trail looking for ways to get in. And I'm guessing they're climbing up and shooting down off that pole like we've seen. I'm gonna put two out of here. I'm gonna put one back here. I'm gonna put one up here. Since we know this is how they're accessing it, I think we've got a good shot to get them tonight. Oh yeah, we're gonna get them today. There we go. Just gonna get a little clammy on the outside. No, I don't want it to get all fungusy on the inside. Let's do one over there. Woo! Splish splash, baby. Three out, one more to go. All right, last one. Well, look what we found. A wing, and then look at this. There's a little dig out, which we had rocks there. We moved them, and that's dug out more than it was before. So there's a chance they're either getting in and out from this side. So we're gonna go ahead and throw the last trap right here next to that chicken wing, and maybe that'll bring them in. Get some freebies going right there too. A little juice, boom. Traps are reset game on tonight. See you guys in the morning. Shoo! Wow!
well. We, um, well, folks, you know, I usually consider myself a decent trapper, not great. I've trapped quite a few things, and there's one species that I would say I can guarantee you I'd trap them, and that would be a raccoon. Except this guy. This may be the world's smartest raccoon possible. So, I looked at the photos last night. They shot to my phone, and he was walking right here. Ate all the food around. Look, he's got his little paw right there, but he didn't touch it. He ate all the other food and nothing. He was here. Like, he was literally here walking. You guys can see the picture. And I've never seen a raccoon not mess. You would think, oh, maybe that steak scares him. But, like, somebody around here had have trapped him before. Because, like, usually raccoons just, oh, sweet dog food. And they reach in there. So we're going to have to bring out the big guns, okay? For those of you guys that don't know, it's not actually trapping season. So we're trying to just use tactics that are for raccoons. Not anything else. Because there's nothing else that we know of that are hurting the chickens and stuff like that. And so sometimes you could run snares. You could run, like, footholds and stuff. But I don't want to catch anything other than a raccoon and one thing that could pretty much guarantee a raccoon catch and only a raccoon catch or maybe a possum but usually not is a foothold like that not a foothold a dog proof so we're trying to keep it like that this is my last ditch effort before i just i give the dub to the raccoon which i i don't want to do we got to get the cage traps and we're gonna go fishing in the mini pond with a net and we're gonna scoop out a fish hopefully we can find like a carp in there i don't really want to burn a bluegill like use a bluegill but like we're gonna put a fresh probably won't be live by tonight but a fresh fish inside the cage trap maybe two cage traps maybe we'll cut the fish in half put two cage traps and we know he's walking right here so i'm thinking one cage trap up against and up against like this so that way like the grass will kind of disguise it a little bit i don't know i'm lost for words folks i've never seen a raccoon just not pay attention anyway i brought one more dog proof too that's like a green color that i might try like hiding in a bush more so maybe i just catch him pecking at it catch him off guard anyways let's go fishing we're getting serious. I gotta catch one of these suckers. We don't even know if they're in here. Look how muddy this is. I swear, we can't keep this pond clear. No matter what we do, they just don't stay clear. Are they fishing here? Uh-oh, it's not even easier said than done, boys. Boys, what if the raccoon eat the fish? Oh, it's war now. They gotta be really good at hiding for me not to see any of them. There's like 10 of them in here. It's just so dang muddy. Oh, these are my leaky boots. I don't know where the fish are. I don't see any floating. They're not dead. I wonder if Ricky got them. I'm gonna have to go scuba diving for these suckers. Woo, I'm wet. Bruh. This isn't good. This isn't good at all. At this point, I think I'm going in. Woo, woo, woo. It's cold. Here, fishy, fishy. Oh god, yeah. Letting them thighs eat. Bruh, I don't see anything in here. You got any ideas? You think they're dead? I have no idea. I don't know what happened. If these filters actually worked, we might be able to see these fish. He gone. Well, I ended up finding some fish in my freezer. Some flying Asian carp that we kept for catfish bait like, like two years ago. And that should work good. And then we've got some other fish in this bag. Some like actual good edible fish. That's how much I care about killing this guy. We got one trap there and one trap here. You're guaranteed to get him to come over here. And we pulled a bunch of grass. We'll brush it in a little bit. I've caught raccoons just setting the sucker in the middle of a dirt field and catching them. This guy seems to be a little next level. You feeling this fish in this guy? Yeah. That one I think is a little harder to trigger so you might want to have bigger him one throw in the there. big guy in there. So we're just going to throw this whole filet. That is a delicious flare right there. I can't believe I'm, I'm wasting it. We got to make it happen. And I've got some fish oil so we can sauce it up a little bit. Pull this up, set the trap. Then that's how it's supposed to work. Like I had said before, it's not trapping season. If you guys are going to try to do something like this, you got to talk to your game warden. He's the one that gives you chicken permission to trap out of season only if your livestock is in danger. And clearly mine is because they're all dead. Well, not all of them. We saw some pigeons to protect. Stick that fish right there. Let's get this trap reset. I want him to have to fight for that. There, just like that. Open that up. Shove it back a little bit more. Oh, yeah. I'm sure we've got all this extra grass. Oh, he's done, buddy. See you later, dude. Gee, he's gonzo. What trap? Yeah, what trap? I don't know what you're talking about there, pal. Oh, he's done. He's so done, buddy. And we'll put the camera on this trap, too, so we can actually watch him. Might move it and put yeah, it here so we can maybe see both. Nighty night to you, my friend. It's all over for this guy. He ain't even going to see it coming, either. <laughs> No, sir. He's going to go sniffing. He's going to try to figure out how to get in it. I've got a little bit of corn and a little bit of dog food. Set some in front of it and kind of trail him so that way there's a little bit of a trail going to it. I think this should work. Let's set the other one. Shh. 
Shoo! Whole fish going in the trap. If he don't like this, I don't know what to tell him. He only likes chicken, I guess. I have a feeling we'll, we'll get him figured out. So we'll set the little hatch in the back. We'll lock that up, make sure Buddy can't sneak in the back door and trick us. Okay, back door's locked. Let's get the hatch open. Oh yeah. This guy ain't even gonna know what hit him. I'm gonna flip this up. I'm gonna hair trigger it too. I'm just gonna get just a little bit on there. Right there. Boom. Trap number two set. A little camouflage. Shee <laughs> Buddy is gonzo. He ain't even gonna know what hit him. Well, food's put out. Set the camera up. See you guys in the morning. Shoo! We got him, folks. We got him. How you feel about it? Banjo, you, you, you missed us setting out some traps, but this, oh man, I am so excited. We got him, dude. It was the old filet, the old fish filet. Hey, how you doing, Junior? Oh, we got that. I forgot we had the camera out there. We might we might check that footage after, because that one didn't get touched. Oh, the dog proof's knocked down, so was that one. I'm sorry, lady. It's personal at this point. You wiped out my entire chicken herd. I do not feel bad about blinding you by the light. Blinded by the light. Yep, blinded by the light does it every time ladies and gentlemen well we finally did it it's like a week-long adventure but we finally got the chicken killer down on the ground we are gonna leave the trap still set up in case there's multiple but i think that was the one big sheila folks finally took care of business we don't have any chickens now to protect besides pigeons we got pigeons still so obviously those guys are still kicking around and we need to protect them i don't know, let me know should i get more chickens are chickens boring should i like put them in an actual coop so we can go collect their eggs every day or should i just not mess with chickens like do you guys like chickens or are you like meh they're just chickens it's not worth the time and the money and, and all that stuff with the food and the grain. Like, let me know. Should, chickens or no chickens? Let me know in the comment section down below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. We'll catch you on the next one. And peace.